Now, one big benefit to using Video.js is that the, the community is very large. So when it comes to add-ons or plugins, yeah, you have a massive list to choose from. Basically, everything you could possibly want is here. So for example, uh, let's just grab one. How about hotkeys? This is one I use at Laracast. So in fact, once again, let me just give you an example. Um, let's click on authentication with no passwords. I'm gonna mute the screen. And now, whenever I have the video activated, I can do things like go forward 10 seconds or backward 10 seconds just by hitting the left and right arrow keys. I can also control the volume. You won't be able to see that, but if I hit down a few, enough times, you can see I'm on mute or up to bring it back up. So you get the idea, just basic keyboard hotkeys. So this is actually what I'm using behind the scenes. And we can see some basic things that it supports. And by the way, yeah, most of this stuff will work on that Laracast video player. Good to know. F for full screen, space bar to pause. Uh, I turned off number keys recently, but if you wanna keep that turned on, that allows you to hit nine to go to 90% into the video, or two to go to 20% in the video, or anything in between. Okay, so here's how we get this set up. It's really simple. You can either reference it from a CDN, or most of these are stored on NPM too. So I'll show you how to do all that stuff once we get to that portion of the series. Okay, next, once Video.js is ready to go, we just reference the hotkeys plugin, and then we pass through any options that we want. And that's it. So it's really easy to use these plugins. Let me show you. Let's go to Sublime. Here's where we left off in the last video. So far, so good. But now we're gonna pull in the hotkeys plugin. So I will reference that script. And then if we go to main.js, yeah, here's just some of our, our playgrounds so far. So I'm gonna comment that out, bring this back, and we'll say, once the video has loaded and it's ready to go, we'll say this.hotkeys, and let's see what we want here. Now, you'll see a bunch of them have defaults. So like the seek step is defaulting to five seconds. I like that to be 10 seconds. So go forward 10 seconds or go back 10 seconds. So let's set that. Seek step is 10. And let's just leave it like that. We'll see if it's working. Okay, so I'm gonna hit play. And if I hit the right arrow key, there we go. Forward 10 or left to go backward 10. Very useful stuff. Okay, anything else we want here? Well, um, you know what? Enable numbers, this is what I was telling you about how one equals 10% or nine equals 90%. So like I'll hit nine and I'm at 90% of the video or five to go 50%. So I thought that was cool, but you know what? It turns out that a lot of people didn't like that because it interferes with their ability to hit, for example, command one to go back to a, a different tab. Now, having said that, you can always click off of the video and all of those shortcuts disappear. So now I'm off the video player, command one would take me to the first tab. But if I click on to it, command one, well, that thinks I want to go to 10%. Anyways, as it turns out, I got a number of complaints about that. So you may want to turn that off yourself. Enable numbers is false. Next, some other things you might want to set. Uh, the volume step. This is if you hit up or down, how much should it increase or go down? This is basically 10%. I think that's fine. Next, yeah, you know what? Most of the defaults are pretty good. I don't think I override too many of these. If you do want to change which uh, which keys should be used, you can, but you know the defaults are, are pretty good. And of course, you can create your own hotkeys if that's something you want to do. And there's an example here. But yeah, other than that, this is how you handle these sorts of things. So for basically any task you want to do, you can pull in a plugin. Now, a quick note here. If you want, most plugins allow you to reference them here. So the, the second argument to the Video.js function, this would be all of your plugin options. So for example, if we go back, notice the setup here. Well, I told you a couple of videos ago, you could either pass your setup here or you can pass it here. So for example, if you want to preload something or set that to meta or, or auto, any of that stuff can be placed here. But also you can do your plugins here as well. So if you want, you could say hotkeys and then configure the plugin like so. Yeah, and that should accomplish the same thing. Now, let me show you one last thing, since I know it will come up. If you want a, a little toggle to control the playback speed, once again, if we go back to um, a Laracast lesson, there is an option, as you know, to control the playback speed right here. So if I want it twice as fast, I can click that, and uh, it'll remember that. Okay, well, you know that doesn't exist on the player. 
So you might look for a plugin, and there used to be some. Uh, you might be able to find an old one. Uh, yeah, here you can see it's deprecated because support for playback rates is built into uh, Video.js now. But having said that, when I first added that feature, I had trouble finding it in the documentation. It might be more visible now, but um, nonetheless, you can reference it here. So playback speeds, and let's just say 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, and 2.5. All right, that's it. So now, just by adding this option, you'll see a new addition to the video. So notice how it is right now. If we give it a refresh, now you're going to see nothing. Nothing's there. And you know what? I'm sorry. Playback rates, not playback speeds. Okay, sorry about that. But one more time, now you'll see the new playback rates option that contains each option you've configured. Now do note, though, it's not going to remember your setting. So if I give this a refresh and play it, it'll default back to one. For lots of sites, that's exactly what you want to do. Uh, for Laracast, that's the sort of thing uh, I had to manually implement. And um, maybe we'll dedicate a video to that. It's just a matter of listening for when the playback rate is changed. You learned about those sorts of events in the last video. Uh, but anyways, when it's changed, you can write to local storage. Just a little uh, Boolean there that you can check on page load. So nothing too difficult there. Okay, anything else we want to cover? Um, on this node, you could also add fluid true. So when you set this, yeah, you basically get a responsive video right out of the box. So in the past with video players, it was, it was kind of tricky. There were lots of little hacks we used to get it to be responsive. There was even one I remember where uh, you set the padding equal to some percentage of the width of the video, and that way it would be responsive. Kind of weird. But uh, yeah, these days, so much easier. So if you set fluid to true, it's going to take up as much space of its container as it possibly can, as you can see here. So for example, um, well, the only wrapper is the body. But if I set the width of the body to 600 pixels, then it's going to take up as much of that space as possible while keeping the, the height at the proper amount. So that's good to know. Okay, that'll do it for this lesson. How about in the next video... Well, why don't we switch over and figure out what this might look like if you're using maybe Vue.js and you want to uh, install Video.js through NPM rather than referencing a script like you might do here. Okay, next video, we'll tackle that.